Hey guys, today I'm decorating pottery. So I've got a couple of pots here that are already slipped, ready to be painted on. And then I've got this jar that is still damp and needs to be slipped. And I have my special white Smectite slip that will hold organic paint and turn it into black designs. So I'm gonna apply that slip to this pot and then I'm gonna put some red slip on it. And then I'm gonna apply some organic paint designs to these and so hopefully I can fire these pretty soon. I have to work hard to get all the lumps out of this after it's sat for a while. It'll kind of firm up into chunks and I pour some more water into it and stir it a lot so that it's nice and smooth when I paint it on. I really don't want any lumps and it, it's kind of that kind of clay that tends to want to make lumps. And then these are my organic paints. So I will add a little water to those. In this case, I'm using distilled water so that I'm not adding any minerals to my organic paint. No hard water, calcium, which will show up on the painted pot if I do. Uh oh, hope I didn't overdo it. One other thing I wanted to show you when I was out last week, I collected a bunch of yucca leaves. So here they are. These are the really small, thin ones that are from the center of the narrow leaf yucca plant. And so I'm soaking them in this water so that I can kind of rot the flesh off of them. And that's kind of how you, that's one of the ways that you get a good yucca paintbrush is to rot the flesh off. This is in preparation for my work, my October workshop that's coming up at the end of this month. I'll let those rot for several weeks uh, and then you can take them out and just kind of rub the flesh off of them pretty easily. It's better if your brush has soaked for a while so those bristles are soft. Unfortunately, I didn't think to soak my brush, so it is what it is. I wish it was I wish the bristles were softer. Now that's just one coat. This will need at least a couple of coats. And then I'll do some smoothing of the, the brush marks with my wet finger too. So this organic paint has sat a little while with the water in it. I just take a little brush and kind of mix it. See what you got. See if you can get a kind of a thick paint-like substance on the top. It rehydrates pretty quickly. Uh, but you have to think ahead. You have to plan ahead and pour a little water in it. and and mix it up before you're ready to use it. So the paints need to sit a little while. This pot needs to sit and let this slip firm up before I put another coat of slip on it. Uh, so I'm gonna let this sit and I'll come back to it in a little while. In the meantime, I'm gonna wrap this up. The slip is no longer sticky, by the way, or I wouldn't be doing this. Um, but I don't want my pot to dry out too quickly while I'm doing this and also that rim is getting kind of dry so I'm just going to add a little water right along the rim. I'm going to wrap that up and I'll come back in maybe 20 minutes or so put another coat of slip on this and then mix this paint up some more and see what I've got. And the beeweed paint is starting to smell sweet. It has a funny sweet syrupy scent to it. Okay, when the slip dries a little bit that I can handle it, I need to flip the jar over 
get the bottom portion with the white slip. Um, my bee plant paint is ready to go. So I just need to get my design uh, in front of me so I know what I'm doing and then I can start painting on uh, these pots. All right, so I've got a variety of yucca brushes soaking in my water here. Um, this is the design I'm going for. You might remember this from an earlier video. So it's not going to be exactly like this, but it's going to be pretty similar. That means I need a circle going around each of these circles that intersects with the banding line, which will go right below the red here. So my first goal is going to be to paint those banding lines, top and bottom, and then to connect those with circles, uh, black circles that go around the red circle. And then the, um, the little sun rays will go inside of those circles. So I got a nice long brush. These are great for pulling these long um, lines. I'm gonna get myself a pookie to set this in. Just so I don't scratch the bottom up while I'm working on this jar. So here's my paint. Like I said, I've got, I've got a, brush, a brush with really long bristles. Uh, what you might call a liner brush, which works pretty good for these long um, framing lines. So as I'm finishing up getting this pot decorated, let me leave you with my top four tips for decorating with organic paint. The first is don't get your slip too thick. This Smectite slip that you need for holding that organic paint usually has a very high shrinkage rate. 
So if you get it too thick and it's easy to do, uh, it'll crackle when it dries and in the firing even more. And then even bits of the slip may start flaking off if it's too crackled. So you can see here, uh, as, I was, as I'm applying it, uh, that where it's damp still, you can see through it pretty well. Uh, places where it's drier up here towards the neck, uh, it's getting a little more opaque. So you don't want to keep applying slip until it's solid white because the truth is it's never solid white. You can look at this one and there are numerous places where I can see brown shining through my white slip. If we look at a cross section of a prehistoric sherd, you'll see that the prehistoric Salado Potters applied their slip crazy, crazy thin. And we want to do the same. And the reason is you're preventing that slip from crackling too much. And like I said, if it gets too thick, it'll start flaking off. So apply your slip thinly. Don't fall into the trap of trying to get it so solid that, you know, it looks solid white. As it dries, it will become more white. My second tip is don't polish that white slip too much. Uh, you want to make it smooth. So it's okay to rub a polishing stone over it uh, gently. Um, but you don't want to press hard. You don't want to compact that slip so much that it won't absorb the paint well. Uh, you'll even have trouble burning carbon out of it from the fire if you get that smectite slip too compacted. So going over it with a stone is fine, but you don't want to like work hard at it. Try to make it glossy. If you try to make that slip glossy, uh, you're gonna pay for it. And when you pull it out of the fire, it's not gonna look the way you intended. My third tip is don't start painting your designs on it until the pot is completely dry. Uh, so it's easy to want to like get excited and start painting on a pot like this. Don't do it. You want to wait until it's fully dry. And, and the reason is once that slip is fully dry and the pot is dry, then when you paint that organic paint on it, it's going to draw it in. It's going to soak it into the slip. And that's what you want. You want that organic paint to soak into the slip a little bit. And so you're going to get that good with a nice dry pot. I've even heard of people warming their pots, which of course will increase that capillary action of drawing that paint in. So don't paint. Don't be tempted to paint too early. Wait until it's bone dry to paint. And my final tip is about the consistency of your paint. Uh, you know, I store this paint dry. Most potters store their organic paint dry. Uh, and so then you put water in it and you rehydrate it. And so sometimes uh, maybe we're in a hurry or, you know, we don't have a lot of time. We have to go to work tomorrow and we want to get that painting done. Um, and we might do it too soon. Or when the Consistency isn't exactly the way we want it. And there's a couple of things to be wary of on this organic paint having to do with the texture of it. If the organic paint is too thick, you can paint it onto the pot, but it's not going to absorb into that slip like I was talking about. It's going to sit right on top of the slip. And then in the fire, it's going to burn out and you're not going to have a nice black image. So you want it to be liquid enough that it's going to be absorbable into the slip but you don't want it so liquid that it's really runny uh, or you'll get drips you know, in your design. Uh, many times with me, I, I accidentally apply too much, get my brush too loaded, and then I'm kind of like balancing the pot to keep that drip from running or blowing on it you know, to try to get that to evaporate more quickly so I can paint the next design. Uh, you don't really want to have to worry about drips, but you do want your paint liquid. I've seen many prehistoric sherds that actually have drips on it. Uh, which gives us clues about the texture that they were painting at. Um, you can also see the edges of their painting, that they're not always really square, a little rounded, because that paint was being applied uh, in kind of a liquidy consistency. So we want it to be liquidy, but not too much, or, you know, or you'll get drips. So to recap, my four tips for painting organic paint pottery were don't apply your Smectite slip too thickly. Two, do not polish the Smectite slip to a nice glossy polish. Three, wait until your pot is bone dry before you begin painting designs on it. And four, make sure your paint is at the right consistency, not too thick nor too thin. Now I'm pretty much done with this one. As you can see, I've got a couple more of these little terraces to put on and I'll be done with that. This one, I'm gonna wait until it's fully dry and then I'm gonna begin painting on it. Uh, it came out okay. I think I got a good coverage on the white slip uh, and the red is good. I have a small rim crack and I'm really not sure uh, what caused that. Um, but chances are it'll go through the firing and it won't get any bigger. It'll stay a small crack. So it's still a decent pot. Could be better. I didn't get around to painting this one at all yet, but hopefully this afternoon I'll get to that. 
Okay? Uh, if you're enjoying my channel, think about subscribing to it so you know when the next video comes out. If you want to learn more about the mysteries of organic paint pottery, check out this video over here, which goes into more detail on the subject of organic paint pottery. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.